we said to students, you know what? This is your platform. Pick Blogger, Flickr, Wikipedia, YouTube, Twitter, Posturist, Delicious, WordPress. And you know what that is in the middle? A UFO. It's actually called the abduction lamp. You'll notice it's a UFO, and the lamp has a, a cow at the bottom, and it's abducting the cow. Well, that's my, it's not a new service, actually. What about giving students a web hosting space? A lamp environment? Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Why not give them a space through which and with which they can create? Well, this is not unique. And the day of small things, whether we like it or not, is upon us. How many of you have ever heard of con? A con? <laughs> How many of you have ever heard of it? Khan Academy is a fascinating thing. This is an, a Professor Khan from MIT actually uses his YouTube account, his service, to create three or four minute videos about a particular topic, ranging anywhere from linear algebra to biology to chemistry, three or four minutes. He is getting millions of views. People are using his work. This is an open educational resource out there for anyone to use and to re-embed. For teachers, these resources are all over the web. He is not doing this through an institution. He's doing this through a website. What about John Udell's Elm City Calendar Curation Project? This is a fascinating but very little known project. John Udell, through Delicious, basically came up with the idea of why aren't communities curating the work that is happening around them? Why aren't they using these resources to actually build a calendar of events? Well, with Delicious, John Udell is actually experimenting with aggregating events that anyone can contribute about what's happening in specific spaces. He started out at Keene, New Hampshire. There's over 60 communities now using this, right? This is a model where we're aggregating in new work. What about what NC State, has anyone seen what North Carolina State is doing with Twitter? And this is actually, it's amazing. North Carolina State basically said to its departments and to its students and to its radio station, what have you, look, get a quick Twitter account, keep us posted on what's happening, and what did their IT department did? They built an open source aggregation for Twitter that they put on their page, and everything that's happening in all these different spaces aggregates. You go to NC State, and you look, NC, just put it NC State Twitter, you get an unbelievable idea of what's happening on that campus at any given moment. This is using a free tool. And the IT department just intelligently created an aggregation space, something I'll talk about shortly. And what about Wikipedia? What about not having a platform necessarily at all that we have to actually manage in-house? This is an amazing project. It's by a professor called John Beasley Murray. He's at the University of British Columbia. What he basically did, and I'll give you the short version, is he started a class on Latin, Ameri on, yeah, Latin American literature. And he basically said to his class, what your project is going to be for this semester, your project is going to be a discussion and a creation of Wikipedia articles about the authors and the novels we write. Some of them were created, but they were all, for the most part, very poor. Well, he said to his students, I want you to create these, I want you to do the research in the library, and I want you to bring this stuff online to the open web. Well, they did. And one of the things built in the syllabus that I thought was genius is they are going to have to be a featured article. One of the things about a featured article on Wikipedia is it's extremely hard to get. Well, he actually had five featured articles for his students. They got featured articles, and an amazing thing happened. A group came on called the FA team, the, the featured article team, playing on the idea of the A team, right? And they actually helped his students edit their articles, to think about Wiki, Wikipedia protocol, to actually build this space. They were free. They were not hired. They did this because they loved Wikipedia. And what happened? 
They created resources that on a regular basis get thousands and thousands of views and link people to greater resources about any particular Latin American author. This is open education. This is happening. Let's think about the cost of this. What does it cost for his university to host Wikipedia? Nothing. What does it cost for his students to get on Wikipedia to do editing and research? Nothing. This is actually learning on the open web. This is actually a contribution students are making to our environment on the web for open education and for access to quality resources. This is happening out in the open. Here's another example, and a fascinating one. George Siemens and Stephen Downs two years ago started this thing called the MOOC. The MOOC. The Massively Open Online Course. And what this was, in short, was a space that allowed people to get their own identities, their own, what we heard about yesterday, personal learning networks or personal learning environments. And this site aggregated that stuff in. So you had thousands of people who started to think about these, this, the material in this course, to blog about it, to write about it. And this is a place where it aggregated, this is a place where things feature, and it's also a place where these communities started to break up and form. And so you're not going to have a class of thousands of people, but communities within that class will grow and form and merge, and then you'll start to see a relationship that understands online learning happens online, in the web. And one of the things we have to think about is how we integrate that stuff in. Well, this is where I get to a point that I think is very important. And one of the things is, if we're moving to small pieces loosely joined, if we're moving to the small, to the day of small things, how do we start to bring this back together? I think one of the ways we can do this, one of the ways we can approach this, is through something called syndication-oriented architecture, also known as feed-frenzied learning, right? This is RSS. This is an open platform, or it's an open format that anyone has access to. And what's great about a lot of these new tools, especially the open source tools and the Web 2.0 tools, is they all have this little thing called syndication or RSS, which basically, in my mind, allows the open web to republish work from one place to another seamlessly. And it changes our idea of reproduction, or changes our idea of being able to bring some of the stuff that's out there on the web into a space that's contextualized for the work that's happening in the class. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of how a syndicated course might look or it might work. 